Most beginner IT certs teach you hardware, operating systems, network fundamentals, which is great. But here's the part that nobody tells you. When you first land that tier one IT job, the Microsoft 365 Admin Center is where you're gonna be living most day to day. And most beginner techs have absolutely no idea how to use it beyond just resetting passwords. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And we're gonna focus on the parts that actually matter on the job. We'll cover users, licenses, groups, shared mailboxes, roles and permissions, service health, reporting, org settings, everything that you're gonna be expected to know on week one. Now, if you wanna stand out in interviews, feel confident once you get hired, or you're already working in IT and you wanna stop guessing your way around this portal, this is the video that I wish I had when I started. Let's jump into it. Okay, so first things first, in order to actually get this rolling, you're gonna to have to get your own Microsoft 365 business standard license. This is gonna cost you 15 to $16 per month but you can practice for a whole month for $15. I think it's well worth it. After you've done that, it's gonna make you either join a tenant or you're gonna have your own tenant with the email that you used. In my case, I just have my own tenant. And you can go to the following website, admin.microsoft.com. Once you're here at admin.microsoft.com, you are officially in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You can see it right up here. Now, please note, this is just a video about the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. They actually have a ton of different admin centers. They have Entra, which they've called Identity. They have the Azure portal, which is Azure resources, infrastructure, all of that stuff. Exchange is separate. SharePoint is separate. Teams is separate. But some of the things that you do in some portals affect other portals, and you can kind of see them in both portals. The 365 Admin Center is just home base for us. So you can see we've got a bunch of important stuff about this Admin Center. The fundamental part that we're gonna be using is our users. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the left side, users, active users. We'll also do a lot with teams and groups. These are gonna be primarily where you'll live as a tier one tech. I've already got some important stuff as well too. Things like roles where you can assign certain users different roles. This can be done here. It can also be done in the Entra Admin Center, so we're not gonna focus super much on that. Uh, the Microsoft 365 Center is also where you're gonna see billing and important things like licenses. In order for your users to do certain things, they're gonna need certain licenses. And again, a lot of what you do at tier one is assigning and removing licenses. Okay, so fundamentally, let's just start off with adding a user. In order to understand the 365 Admin Center, you need to understand on-premises infrastructure and cloud infrastructure. In the scenario that I'm looking at, this company doesn't have physical servers. They just have all of their users in the cloud. If I wanted to add a user, I could just click add user up here. However, many environments nowadays are hybrid environments, so they have on-premises Active Directory, and then that syncs up to Microsoft 365. If that's the case, you're gonna add your user in AD, Active Directory, it's gonna sync up, and then your user's gonna appear here. If you see on this column over here, you can see sync status. My users show up as cloud users because I don't have an on-premises server set up for this lab. Now within my user pane, I can do important stuff. If I click on my user, I can do things like adding and taking away licenses here with licenses and apps. I only have one license because that's all I paid for, but if you had more, they would appear here, like Exchange Online, Microsoft Business Premium, uh, Power BI, Team Standard, Phone Licenses. I can also reset passwords for my users here, but again, if I have a hybrid environment, I'm probably gonna be doing that on-premises and then syncing up. In my cloud environment, however, I can reset a password right here, and I can do some mail-related things as well. Uh, I can look at mailbox storage quotas, I can manage email apps, which is pretty useful if you want your users to be able to use email on their phones, you have to have this mobile exchange active sync checked. I can manage forwarding to other people. I can also convert this user's mailbox to a shared mailbox, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I can manage whether they appear on the global address list, which is when I type their name in, does their contact automatically appear for people? And then I can set up some auto replies too. Now it's important to note with regard to mail, if I'm making mail changes, I'm probably gonna do that in the Exchange Admin Center instead of the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Most of what I do here is user and license and account related. One of the cool thing that I can view is sign-ins for this user in the last seven days. However, again, if I'm doing this, I'm probably gonna do it in the Entra admin portal, which we'll go over these other admin portals in separate videos. You can see I have a bunch of successful sign-ins and then, oh, it looks like I have a failed sign-in here at 8.16 a.m. Okay, so after users, the most important thing that I'm gonna be dealing with are groups. If I go over here to active teams and groups, I can see I have three fundamental kinds of groups. I have teams and 365 groups, I have distribution lists, and I have security groups. Let's discuss the difference. A 365 group is gonna come with your Microsoft team, and it's also gonna come with its own SharePoint website. A distribution list, on the other hand, if I wanted to add one, is a list that sends a copy of an email to all of my people. So let's make one. Let's call this HR, HR uh, distro list. I have to assign an owner. I'm gonna call myself the owner. 
I might also make some members. I'm the only licensed user in my org right now, so I'm the only one that I can add as a member, so I'll be a member as well. And then I need to set an email address. Let's say I want the distri this distribution list to be hr at my domain. So it's gonna be hr at jkitdemo.microsoft.com. Anyone can send email if I wanna set that. So people from outside can send email to this distro list. And I've got it created. What does that mean? If people send an email to hr at my domain, that is gonna send a copy of that email to the members' personal emails, and then the members can reply as themselves. Now I go through this and say this carefully because I also have things called shared mailboxes. A Microsoft 365 group is gonna come with a shared mailbox. If I have a shared mailbox, then I can reply as the mailbox. So let's go ahead and make a shared mailbox. We're gonna call this IT, and it'll be IT at Jake Demo. Okay, so now I have this IT shared mailbox. I can set up delegation to the shared mailbox so that certain people can read and manage this mailbox. Let's go ahead and add permissions here on the right. Again, I'm gonna add my only licensed user myself. That means that now I can mount this shared mailbox and again, send and receive as the shared mailbox. A lot of people can be on it. I don't get a copy. I literally receive in that mailbox and I send in that mailbox. That's the difference. Now again, I'm not gonna get super deep dive into this because a lot of this is exchange type stuff. Distribution lists, shared mailbox, you can also make in the Exchange Admin Center. But you can manage them here in the Microsoft Admin Center as well. Please note, if I delete a user, I can see them in deleted users here for 30 days. So if I had deleted a user, I can come and I can revive them and bring them back to life within 30 days. That's important to note. And I've also got this thing called contacts. I can add contacts for external people. So I can end, add this for Juan, Pablo, Juan Pablo at gmail.com. So if I wanted to add him as a contact, he's not in my organization, but people can still send him email. He can appear in their global address list and things like that. I can even add contacts to the distribution list so they can get copies of the emails as well. Now, other main things that you're gonna see here in this admin center, you're gonna see role assignments where I can actually assign roles to people. So if I want people to have certain abilities in my organization, like a global admin, a really privileged role where they can do anything, they can make people, delete people, change settings, do all of this stuff. Maybe I want people to have less of a ability to make changes. Like I just want somebody to be able to administer teams, I can give them this role. So I can assign this to certain people, assign admins. But again, a lot of this is gonna be done in the Entra ID. If you're questioning, how do you remember all these portals? There's a million of them and you can do some of the same stuff in different ones and this and that, and how do I know which one to go to? Thank Microsoft. It is very, very, very confusing at first. It's also important that you know where to go to do certain things because some things you would think intuitively you can do in one portal, but you can't and you have to go to another portal. And again, please note, you should not be giving people the role of global administrator unless they really need it because this is a privileged role. It's kind of dangerous if somebody gets compromised and they have the ability to change the entire org. That's dangerous, right? From a security perspective, you wanna use this principle of least privilege. And I just wanna make a quick nod to things like PIM, Privileged Identity Management, where people can kind of come into roles temporarily, just in time, and then they can go back to a normal user role. All of that is way deeper. It's gonna be an intra, and we don't need to talk about it right now. Now, the other most common thing that you're gonna be doing in the 365 Admin Center is licensing. Again, you can go here to licenses, and you can see all the licenses that you have. If you've purchased licenses, they'll appear here. Notice I only have one, but if I had 20, I might say one of 20. That means that I can add people to that license. So I could click on business standard, and I could assign certain licenses to people. Again, I can't because I only have one, but if I did, I would be assigning and taking away licenses. When you get a new user, you make them on-premises probably, you sync them up to the cloud, they appear here and they appear unlicensed. Just like Pablo, look at Pablo Marquez. He appears unlicensed. I might have to click on him and add licenses. I could do it here from his user pane, licenses and apps, add it here or I could do it down here on this left side, licenses. I can also look at bills, payments, billing. If you're gonna be that type of person in your, uh, in your company, some kind of an account manager or a payment manager or uh, HR or something like that where you're dealing with this, you're gonna be dealing with that. At tier one for IT, you're probably not. You may have to reach out to someone to buy more licenses so that you can assign them to people. Uh, and there are a bunch of different licenses that to be honest with you, I don't remember the difference between them because anytime I have some discrepancy where I need someone to be able to do a certain thing, I just Google it or ChatGPT it. 
there's no reason to rote memorize everything nowadays. Uh, it doesn't really make you a better tech if you memorize something that's easily Googleable. Just know that there are a lot of different licenses that afford different capabilities to people. Okay, I've also got Microsoft Help here, help and support. Um, I've never made a ticket with Microsoft Help. I shouldn't say never. I've never made a useful ticket with Microsoft Help because they never are any help. So if you really need uh, help, you're better off going to forums and figuring out your issue yourself. And then one other important thing that you can see here is uh, settings. So you can see domains that your organization owns. I don't actually own any domains. This is one that was created for me when I made this tenant. But if I did, if I had like jakehulberg.com, I would put it up here, add domain, and I could actually set up mail records so that mail flows through Microsoft for that domain and all of that type of stuff. Probably not something you're doing at tier one. But I can also look at important org settings, okay? Things like brand setter and assets where I can actually set up how things appear for my users. If I wanna have some certain branding or some certain kind of photo appear when people go to the login screen or something like that. This is all can be set up here. Interestingly enough, they've also moved Microsoft Edge to the 365 portal. So if you wanna set your organization's Edge settings, you can do that. You can set configuration policies where people are only allowed certain uh, extensions or it's a lot like GPO with managing devices Edge or your user's cloud Edge and what they can and can't do with the browser. Probably not something you're doing a lot at tier one. And then you do have your reports and your usage, probably not gonna be heavily used at tier one, but you can see what your users are doing, how much mail they're sending. Um, you have all of these different options. It's super granular. You can get tons of information from Microsoft. And then again, if we expand this pane out, you have all of your other different admin centers. It's important to note that you can get to these different admin centers in multiple different ways. You can just go to the Microsoft 365 admin center and say, hey, I need to go to Entra. So I'm just gonna click here and go to the Entra admin center, or I need to go to the Exchange admin center, I'm gonna click here, or you could just type them straight into the browser. You could type admin.exchange.microsoft.com and it'll take you to this Exchange admin center that looks very similar, but there's a lot of different functionality and a lot of different things that you can actually do. Again, we'll cover that in a different video. Okay, so a little recap. Fundamentally, what we're doing in this center is getting our users active, setting them up, maybe resetting passwords if they're cloud-only users. If we need to change certain mail settings, we can do it here. If we need to look at sign-ins, we could do it here. Managing groups and understanding the difference between 365 groups, distribution lists. We didn't really talk about security groups. Security groups is more of an intra thing, and it's more used for granular permissions to things. So I might make it a security group that says, oh, this security group has access to our file store. So uh, we'll call it like F drive, right? Anyone in this security group will get the F drive automatically mounted. It's not really an email related group or anything of that sort. It's more of a permissions related group. And permissions with Microsoft goes deep. If you've worked in IT or you've taken some higher level identity and access management certs, you know that permissions go very deep. People can have permissions. Groups can have permissions. Apps can have permissions. They have something called a service principle that can be granted permissions to certain things. Or it can take permissions of on behalf of the user. So it's really, really deep and you can get really, really granular. Not super important for this video. Note, they've just added this deleted groups option as well. So if you delete a group on accident, you can go recover your group. That's important. But the fundamental main thing that we're doing is user management in Microsoft 365. Another important thing, if you wanna add multiple users, you can add multiple users doing a CSV. So you can say, I wanna update a comma separated value file with all of my users. Cause maybe you have to onboard like a hundred users at once. When you click this, you can actually download a template that includes example user info. And then you can just fill in all of your users there, put it up here and Microsoft will do the work for you and just create all of those users for you. As I'm sure you could guess, you could get super granular with this and you can set up dynamic groups where all of these users automatically get their licenses and stuff like that. And so you can be really, really, really automated with your processes, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff. But as a beginner IT person, you're probably not doing that. You're probably doing individual user additions, licensing, making sure their mail is right, setting things like proxy addresses, although that'll also be in the Exchange Admin Center. Guys, if you're wanting to get into IT, I highly recommend that you take a look at this Admin Center and play around with it and understand which things you can do in which parts. You do not have to be a master at the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but this is somewhere that you're gonna live probably more than anything else, if not Active Directory. Also, this Admin Center works alongside Active Directory. So you've got your on-prem user management, but then you also have your cloud side of things where you're doing licensing, you're setting up emails, you're setting up groups, you're doing all of this stuff that I didn't realize you'd be doing before I got into IT. When I thought about IT and user management, I only thought about Active Directory. I never thought about Microsoft. This is like the missing piece. So again, highly recommend that you look into it. Hope this video hasn't been too scatterbrained. I really just wanted to go over the basics 
of the 365 admin center. And in future videos, we'll go over that exchange admin center, all of the things that we can do there and our intra admin center as well and all of the things that we can do there, which is a lot. Thank you guys so much for the support lately. I hope you're doing well. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions. Good luck on the IT job search and good luck practicing in this Microsoft 365 admin center. Be good. On to the next one.